In our buried lead, that's what we call stories we feel are not getting enough attention. Today marks the first Veterans Day since President Biden ended the U.S. involvement in the war in Afghanistan. And this morning, the White House announced new plans to help some veterans who have potentially been exposed to burn pits and other hazardous materials while serving in the armed forces and are suffering as a result. Throughout Iraq and Afghanistan, burn pits were used 24-7 to incinerate all sorts of waste. Food, old uniforms, medical waste, ammunition, trucks, nuclear waste, human feces. The kinds of pits that were not allowed to be constructed in the United States. Now, Biden has, has President Biden has previously speculated that burn pits may have been responsible for his late son Bo's brain cancer, although he has noted that he can't prove it yet. Right now, the VA only recognizes some illnesses associated with burn pits, making benefits that much harder for veterans to attain. Brain cancer, we should note, is not among them. Today's action only expanded the list to include some respiratory cancers and constrictive bronchiolitis. Let's discuss with Isaiah James. He's an Army veteran. He served twice in Iraq, once in Afghanistan. He's now a senior policy advisor for the Black Veterans Project and has talked quite a bit about burn pits. Um, thank you so much for joining us, sir. I, according to the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, 86% of post-9-11 veterans who served in Iraq or Afghanistan say they were exposed to burn pits. You were one of those service members. In fact, you worked on a burn pit. Explain to our audience what that was like and, and what you're experiencing now. Uh, well, what it's like is you don't really understand what it's like. You're just doing what you're told. You're following orders. You're just burning everything. It's hot. It's, it's dusty. It's, it's disgusting. You know, my first deployment, we, we had to burn human feces. And, and my third deployment in Afghanistan, we lived in the mountains and everything was dirty and we just burned everything. Uh, what I'm dealing with now are the repercussions and the ramifications of those actions. You know, I have respiratory issues. I have lung scarring. I am, I'm on breathing treatments every single day just to be able to breathe. And I'm not an aberration. I'm millions of veterans across this country. So John Stewart, who's very active uh, on this issue, he has a new podcast where he interviews you and he interviews your late friend, Staff Sergeant Wesley Black, a fellow burn pit victim and activist. Uh, he had colon cancer. He died just after the interview. I want to play a little bit of, of, about what Staff Sergeant Black said. I first started arguing about burn pit legislation, thinking that I wasn't going to make a difference. You know, I was just one single voice that right. how much can a difference can one voice make? Right. And as I've continued down this path, now I'm thinking more of what what legacy I'm leaving behind for my son mm -hmm. and what my son is going to think of me in 10, 12, 15, 25 years. I hope in some small way that my choosing to stand up for what is right will forever last in his mind of, you know, my dad was a good person. And we should note today's move, and look, it's a step in the right direction. They expanded the list of diseases, but it would not have helped Staff Sergeant Black. It does not cover colon cancer. What do you think of today's move? Today's move, like you said, was a step in the right direction, but quite frankly, Jake, it's a it's a Band-Aid over a bullet wound. It's, it's, it's a placation move. There are some 40 to 50 different cancers and diseases linked to these same chemicals that our soldiers are, you know, were exposed to during toxic burn pits. And I don't understand why, for the life of me, there's the hemming and hawing to try to get these things as presumptive, you know, diseases. We need an actual comprehensive bill that is going to take care of veterans. We see this after every single war with every generation. I applaud the Biden administration for taking the step in the right direction, but we need big, bold, transformational leadership on this issue. And this, this trash, this burn pits, it's been burning for 20 years. If you're a service member experiencing symptoms such as respiratory cancer, what happens now when you go to the VA? Well, right now the VA, first of all, they should be ashamed of themselves. Second of all, it's an adversarial relationship. The VA is basically victim blaming. They tell you, the service member, Prove to me that you got this cancer from the burn pit instead of let me treat this cancer and let me go back on the back end and audit it. We, we need a VA that's going to actually take the charge that Lincoln set forth to care for him and her who have borne the brunts of battle. So right now, it's, it's basically you're trying to pull crocodile teeth 
to get the VA to even recognize you have these diseases from the burn pits. On top of all this, on this Veterans Day, we should acknowledge veterans continue to struggle with mental health concerns, quite understandably. But between your last two deployments, you were hospitalized in Germany for post-traumatic stress. Is the government doing enough to address mental health issues when it comes to veterans? Absolutely not. The government in this issue, if, th if this was a movie, the government would be the villain. We spend hundreds of billions of dollars every year on the weapons and the mechanisms of war. Yet we just forget the war fighters when they come home. 22 veterans a day are killing themselves. That is an absolute travesty in the richest nation on earth. The government, again, needs to have skin in the game. It's very easy for politicians to sit back, the ones who don't have to go, they're not from poor neighborhoods like I was, and, they, and then we're, they use us as cannon fodder and, and political grandstanding to say they support the troops. Well, the troops are telling you we need help. We don't want to be treated better than everybody. We don't want to be treated worse. We just want what you promised us. We went in your name. You told us if we fought, you would take care of us. And now that bill has come due. With the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan, there's been a renewed mental health crisis within the veteran community. Um, now that it's been a few months, what is your takeaway from how the U.S. pulled up troops out of Afghanistan? There's never an easy way to end a 20-year conflict. I think we ended it 19 years too late. You know, after I was in Afghanistan, quite frankly, when we got Osama bin Laden. I was 60 miles away from the Pakistan border. I was in Maywand, Afghanistan. And I turned to my lieutenant and I asked him, I was like, sir, why are we still here if we got him? You know, we, we, there's never a right way to end a war, but we had to end it. It was always going to be messy. It was always going to be bloody. You know, and quite frankly, those who have never been there and served, their opinions aren't really, you know, warranted. I let the generals who are there on the ground tell me what we need to do, but we had to get out. We, they, we cannot keep falling for this same thing of trying to nation build around the world. It never ends well, as we can see. Isaiah James, you honor us by being here on Veterans Day. Thank you so much for, for coming. Thank you so much for all the sacrifices you have made for the rest of us. And keep, keep up the fight. We're going to keep interviewing you and bringing this to the, uh, the American people. Thank you so, so much for having me and for using your platform to elevate this issue.